Okay, the first thing for us to do is to go ahead and get our fans onto the radiator. So we've already decided we're going to have our fans exhausting air, so the front of the fan is going to need to face into the case. So they're going to go this way on the radiator. The other important thing, we're going to want this cable coming out the back, towards the back of the case. So that's going to be the cables facing this way round. So we'll go ahead and put the second fan onto the radiator. So in the box we've got these long screws. So there's just one in each corner. Okay, so we can go ahead and tighten these up with a screwdriver. Important, we don't want to over tighten these. If we do, there's a risk of causing noise by distorting the fan. So it's just till it first goes tight is really all we want to do. Okay, coming from each of the fans, we've got a four pin connector. They're both going to need to go into the CPU fan header, and that's why with the AIO you get a double fan splitter cable. So all we need to do is plug that in. It's only going to go round one way. So we're now left with one connection from our fans, which we can plug into our CPU fan header. Okay, looking at the other connectors we have, we've got a three pin connector coming from the pump, and a three pin connector coming from the water block. The one coming from the pump obviously powers the pump, so it can pump water around the, the system. And the one coming from the water block is just to control the LED lights on the water block. There's no RGB, it's just a white LED colour, which will work very well for what I like. I normally set the, the RGB to white anyway, so I'm quite happy with this. Now there's another adapter that comes with the kit. It's got a SATA port on one end, and it's got two three pin adapters on the other. So we can go ahead and plug these in. So now all we have to do is plug this SATA connector into our power supply. It's going to power our pump, so it works, and it's also going to power the LED on the pump head. Importantly, we're not going to have any control now over the speed of the pump. It's going to run at 100%. But that's not a problem. I normally will run the pump at 100% and we will adjust the speed of the fans using the CPU fan header in the motherboard software. Okay, one of the nice things about this case is the removable fan stroke radiator bracket for the top. So we can go ahead and install this on the table, which is much easier than doing it in the case. So we want to use the shorter screws that come with the AIO. And again, it's important we don't over tighten these so we don't damage the radiator. So I'm just going to put them in loosely first of all. And I have lined the radiator up with this bracket in the case so I know that it's in the right place where I want the AIO to go in the case. Next we're going to need to replace the brackets for the stock CPU cooler with the ones that came with our IIO. So it makes sense to remove one of these brackets at a time. If we remove all four, the back plate will fall out. So if we just remove two, the back plate should still stay in place. Okay. Whatever you do, don't throw these away. If you change your CPU cooler in the future, um, or you sell your motherboard, you're going to need these, so the best place to keep these is in your motherboard box. Next we need to put two of these little spacers. Next we need to put this little bracket on. It has two holes, one of them is marked AM4, so we need to put the screws through the one marked AM4, which I've done now. I can then lower the screws down through the spacers, and we can go ahead and screw this into place. Okay, just the same process with the other side. Okay, next we can go ahead and slide the bracket back into the case. So just line things up on both sides and push the bracket in. We can then go ahead and secure it back in place with the two screws we removed at the start. Next thing to do is to plug the cable coming from the two fans on the radiator into the CPU fan header, and it's this header here at the top right hand side of the motherboard. The one directly to the right of it is the pump header. We're obviously not going to need to use it because our pump is powered by SATA, 
but most IOs will be powered by this header. So first of all, I'm just going to bring the excess cable out the back of the case. And then I'm going to line things up with the socket and push things into place and then bring the excess cable out the back. Next thing to do is to add some thermal paste to the CPU. There's a whole variety of different ways of doing this. My preferred method is just to add a pea-sized amount to the centre of the CPU. Okay, and that looks about right. Just before we install the water block, it's important we go ahead and remove the plastic protection. Okay, so we just need to line things up with the bracket we installed earlier on. And then it's just a matter of tightening the two screws. So a few turns of one, and then a few turns of the other. And that way we don't apply too much pressure to one side. Next we can go ahead and bring the cables coming from the water block and the pump out the back of the case. Last thing to do is to take the cable coming from the pump and water block and plug it into the SATA cable coming from our power supply. So there we go, that's the IO installed.